All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is the Earthmaster out here on this side of the microphone. About uh, 9.17 p.m. here, California time, August 29th, 2024. We got September right around the corner. Goodness. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows a 3.8 into the area that's seen that uh, well, a pretty large earthquake there around the uh, San Salvador area, El Salvador region yesterday i need to adjust this here real quick looks like we got a little bit too much uh, quake activity on the map due to the uh the time up here on this little timestamp. that's more like it last 24 hours so latest earthquake activity there uh, on the map now uh we did see some threes down here in the baja california area earlier this morning as far as uptick here in southern california goes uh, still seeing a handful of earthquakes scattered out and about a little separate swarm down here around the uh, Ocotillo Wells area. Pretty uh, shallow earthquake activity, about six miles here below the surface for a bunch of small microquakes. Nothing big, but a little bit of swarming going on. Also a little bit around the Salton Sea. The San Andreas Vault here, pretty quiet for now. Not a whole lot of activity specifically on that. Uh, Los Angeles area as well, pretty quiet right now. Uh, Bakersfield area, still seeing a handful of earthquakes here, including one in the last hour. 14 in the last 24 hours. we got to be getting close here uh, to the 800 mark. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Last uh, couple weeks here, last 30 days of earthquake activity, specifically in this region where they've seen that 5.2 earthquake a couple weeks back now, approaching uh, 800 earthquakes. That's a lot of earthquake activity. Goodness, and it is uh, continuing here. But uh, not out of the norm to see uh, you know, a tremendous amount of aftershock activity from a five-pointer. But uh, still going. Still going strong out there. A little bit of movement around the Ridgecrest area as well. Overall, just uh, you know, keeping an eye on Southern California area. I know we see little periods of uptick out here. And it seems to come and go in waves out here. Uh, and that is, of course, according to... Uh, you know, if we get some adjustment out here across the western Pacific, maybe the south here, uh, we'll see a little bit of re release of pressure up here for now, and then things will kick back up, um, you know, a certain time later. So it's not always underneath seeing, a, you know, uh, like a whole bunch of earthquake activity out here. So um, this morning, yeah, there was a little bit of uptick here, uh, a bunch here in Nevada, and we're still seeing one within the last hour or so, but, uh, um, you know, it's kind of backed off a little bit in terms of uh, the multitude of quakes out here. Still seeing some movement out here across the Las, Ve Las Vegas area. Getting that linear fashion out here, even extending down in this region. Remember last night I was showing you guys uh, a trail of earthquakes out here in Northern California stretching down through Nevada. Uh, and now tonight we got some activity further south here along the line. There's some talk some talk here that the plate boundary itself may be transferring from the San Andreas Fault over to the Walker Lane area, which sits over here. But I um, I don't think that would happen in a rapid type development. It would probably take a long time. Um, so I don't, I don't really firmly believe that the new plate boundary is going to be out over here across Nevada or the Walker Lane area. Uh, I still firmly believe it's the San Andreas Fault, and it's been building up steam here for quite a while. But uh, there's been a little bit of scientific uh, chat about uh, maybe the uh, a, a new section out here is going to be the new plate boundary in the future. But uh, that's going to be another video, another night. Uh, but we are seeing a little bit of earthquake activity out here recently, and it's been uh, it's been consistent. Uh, Northern California, not too much going on here. One earthquake from uh, earlier. Looks like a couple hours or so ago, 2.1. Nothing major going on through the Pacific Northwest. Look at this one earthquake up here. All right, smack dab. Well, this is about 15 miles deep here into the Cascadia. Uh, but that is associated with the subduction zone here. Got the Cascadia subduction zone that sits just offshore here. And, uh, you know, these ridges here indicating all the strain and pressure built up here, raising this land up. Um, the North American plate here, while the Juan de Fuca plate is being subducted here underneath this area. All this has been rising, been accumulating strain, and uh, it's, it's uh, you know, 324 years since the last big earthquake out here. And this 
Cascadia subduction zone can rupture in uh, segments, if you will. Uh, the full rupture here would produce a nine pointer or greater. That's the entire length of the Cascadia. The southern end uh, is capable of producing up to about an 8.4 here. Um, and that does come in segments, but there's also been a little bit of chat that maybe a little segment up here on the northern end uh, is possible of uh, seeing some, uh, some rupture as well without triggering the entire length here of the Cascadia. I read that in the article. I, don't, I didn't have it pulled up here. I'll have to cover that in the morning. Um, but there's been a little bit of new scientific discovery here on uh, why this area doesn't have a whole lot of ridging going on here. Notice these ridges here, right? These uh, thrust faults. Uh, being created because of all this uh, uh, the uh, pressure that's going on here. This area, roughly about uh, Washington, southern Washington area northward, doesn't have all that, that uh, ridging going on. So they feel that uh, this area could uh, potentially be one to go here. Uh, but then again, you know, it could be any of these sections, any of these segments. Uh, or or just a one whole segment that would go but uh, it's an interesting article I'll, I'll see if i can pull it back up here in the morning uh not a whole lot going on as far as uh, volcanic activity through the cascades for now a couple smaller microquakes up there uh, yellowstone national park nothing going on really um but let's just double check here see what we have across the area that i'm not for sure what that is could be some wind thunderstorms earlier it could be some machinery tractors generators uh if this was uh, indeed magma or earthquake activity it would show up here across local seismograph stations and i'm really not seeing anything that looks identical on these nearby stations here so that's some type of local um interruption there in the seismograph data a couple smaller earthquakes here is noted around the maple creek area in the last few hours not a big amount, but it looks like maybe four. A couple earlier this morning as well. So we're getting a handful of earthquakes up there around the Yellowstone area, but nothing big. Just a couple ones up there for now. Across the center portion of the country, oil fields getting hit. One earthquake out in the New Madrid seismic zone from this morning. A little two-pointer. Aside from that, things are pretty quiet out there for now. Uh, Hawaii. Let's go ahead and check in on Hawaii real quick, see if we got anything major going on. A little 2.1 just below the surface here. About uh, almost a mile there below the surface. Still just seeing uh, committed uh, earthquake activity up here at the summit region, uh, upper east rift zone, I should say, where we've seen the last couple magma intrusions here take place. So let's go over, see what we got. We haven't checked this out in a little bit. Make sure I got the most recent data here from the US GS. And there's Kilauea Volcano, still sitting at a yellow and advisory. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity. And uh, looking at the seismograph stations here in the last 12 hours shows that there's only been a handful out here. So actually eerily quiet. Uh, even though we've seen recent magma intrusions and the deformation data out here uh, shows that we're starting to... Uh, oh, we a little bit of an odd turn here. Look at this. I've seen a large spike here uh, about a day ago and then things dropped like a rock recently but the overall pattern not for sure what's going on here with this um, yeah that's a little bit of interesting activity there up and down in a a, uh, a sharp statement like that on the graph that's uh interesting for sure uh, let me check out the tilt meters out here and see what we got. That's at the summit area. A tilt meter down here across the upper east rift zone. Not a whole lot of change here since our most recent uh, magma intrusion there back on the 20th over a week ago or so. Not really seeing anything from this most recent activity. It just looks a little odd there at the summit area. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a waiting game. This is way different than Iceland. This is a hot spot. Iceland, obviously, uh, continental rift zone, but uh, just a waiting game. I once we once we see some further elevated earthquake activity out here, uh, then we may be able to say more what's going on. But right now, it's just it is just minimal, stationary. Um, 
And it's a waiting game. Some activity stretching out here across the uh, Pahala area towards the Lohi Seamount, but these are all relatively deep earthquakes, not at the surface level. Uh, so these earthquakes associated with the plumbing system into the deeper areas below that, you know, the hotspot area uh, where, the, where it sits over the Pacific Plate, uh, it's, that activity fuels these volcanoes up here. And, uh, you know, who knows? Could see some further uptick here across the uh, Lohi Seamount. Eventually, uh, the big island will be a new big island somewhere over here and so on. I mean, we can see it throughout the hotel and how many millions of years out here that the um, hot spot uh, looks like it's traveled. But this is just basically the Pacific Plate here moving over that hot spot. And um, it will continue its journey out here as the Pacific Plate moves off to the northwest. Uh, this hot spot, <coughs> excuse me, will be further down the line here. Pretty crazy. As uh, far as any worldwide major activity goes, one earthquake way south here this afternoon, 5.1. This is a, a little fracture zone down here. I don't think we got anything major going on uh, New Zealand-wise. Looks like a couple threes down there. Nothing major. A couple deeper activity earthquakes, uh, uh, deeper earthquakes up there around the Izu Trench. Notice these uh, rings being raised off the globe quite nicely. And uh, Alaska, pretty quiet. Look at that. Not a whole lot going on up north. Um, still seeing a little bit of activity around the Caribbean plate as noted here across the Middle America Trench. That's over here where we've seen our six-pointer here yesterday. It does look like it stirred up a little bit of swarming out here across Puerto Rico. Nothing big for now. Uh, just some threes out there and some twos. South America area. A little bit of further migration here along the Peru Chile Trench with the latest being a 4.1 down here around the Chile area. So a uh, fairly mellow day in terms of earthquake activity. We'll continue to keep an eye there on California and, you know, it's, it's definitely active out there, but no crystal ball. We don't have that crystal magic ball to figure out when the, the big earthquake is going to take place out here, but... Again, with all the recent activity, we need to be on guard here for sure. All right, space weather activity here real quick is, um, well, we've seen a little bit of bump up here in terms of uh, some flaring, a low-grade M flare. Not for sure exactly where that came from. I'm guessing maybe from one of these far side sunspots or maybe on the eastern limb here. Looks like uh, getting quite active. Look at all these magnetic arches there uh, sweeping off the sun. And uh, this little guy down here looks a little active as well. So let's see what we got here for the magnetic complexity. There's that uh, interesting sunspot region that's kind of popped up out of the blue. This is a newer region, uh, literally a new sunspot. Unlike some of these other ones that may be sunspots that were former sunspots out here a couple weeks ago on the Earth-facing side. That's going to get renamed. This one here is literally a new one. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, looking a little complex there, fairly rapidly. Uh, this area here still shows uh, a little bit of complexity within it. That's one of the former sunspots that were out here, I think, a couple times now. I don't. It's hard to keep track of the uh, the sunspot names. And we got more around the eastern limb here. We've seen all those magnetic arches there uh, swooping off from the sun. These areas right here look like they're quite active. We'll get a little bit better view. In the coming days here, right now, flare threat shows uh, not a whole, well, I mean, uh, the aurora threat, not a whole lot here. Flare threat, still minimal, 10% for the X flare, 64% for the M flare, 99% chance for a C flare. And the aurora's really not happening out there for now. Um, all right, so that's about it. Um, I don't think we got anything major going on as far as any hurricanes go to the uh, Gulf area or the West Coast or the East Coast, for that matter. I'll put this into motion here a little bit and see what these weather forecast models are hinting at. Um, I really don't see anything here. There's maybe a little tropical system down here in the Mexico area, Southern Gulf, uh, as we head to the first week of September. But, uh, yeah, the, the pattern out here is keeping... Uh, keeping for the most part all the hurricanes away from the area even though we've had a you know very warm water temperatures out here it's been kind of a 
if you really think about it, it's been a I better not say it, right? I may jinx it, but uh, it's been, uh, I would say, well below normal out here for hurricanes lately. Even with these extreme warmer water temperatures going on. Goodness. But that's good, though, right? We, we don't want any major hurricanes hitting out here. Uh, seismograph stations out here. Pretty quiet, folks. Got my plate full um, in the morning. And tomorrow, I'll be posting a special update to the uh, uh, members tomorrow. So look for that. A little special update. And uh, we do have the member drawing coming up here in a couple weeks. That's something that we do. Uh, we give away some prizes every 15th of the month to our members. So if you're not a member, jump on board. You get free uh, emo or uh, extra perks, extra emojis. Um, like I say, free uh, uh, merchandise there. Free gift cards if you are the lucky winner that we pick out there every uh, every 15th. And of course, extra videos and whatnot that we provide as well. I'm thinking of some new stuff. Uh, to add on to the members only um, option. Uh, let's see what we got here. Thank you there, Missy. She just gave me a heads up here that we got uh, I was just about ready to end the update here. We got a pretty large earthquake over here on the curl cam chat cup. Look at that. I was just about ready to say, have a good night. We're out of here. And guess what? That earthquake would have popped up. So it never fails. It seems to be uh, seems to be my thing here recently. But anyway, we got a, a decent earthquake there coming into the uh, Russia area. Now, let's see. I don't see anything showing up yet on. It would probably show up there across the Japan station, which is uh, why is there so many of these up here? Hold on a second. Yellowstone, there's a Japan station right here. So there's a little view of it. Um, that's way up there on the Curl Cam Chatka Trench here, northern end, Japan down here. Um, oh, it just got downgraded there. It looks like to 5.9. Let's see what the USGS here is reporting this earthquake as. Nothing yet. They've been a little slow. Uh, so this is coming in from the EMSC model. Uh, which is right over here and that earthquake coming in about 51 kilometers deep for a 5.9 um, some testimonies coming in but I do not uh, read Russian there off the east coast of the Kamchatka area now the source parameters have not yet been reviewed by a seismologist these are some of the data providers that are coming in right now, but it uh, doesn't look like USGS has picked up on it yet. And judging by the uh, signal on this seismograph, there's some there's a P wave, there's some S waves coming in. It looks to be yeah, it looks to be around the upper five range. I'm, I'm betting they probably drop it maybe a a little bit to about a 5.7. Just judging uh, by this reading right here, it doesn't look any bigger than. Uh, a 5.7 for this area but uh, uh, and, and they keep dropping it now it's a 5.8 so <laughs> I'm just going by what I see there on the arrival of the P wave at the Japan station from that location so not anything bigger than that either way that's a little bit of an uptick right a 5.8 5.7 you know it's that's still a decent sized earthquake in an area that's been uh, you know quiet all day it looks like so now we're starting to kick up all right, folks, uh, and now we got the West Coast kicking up here about the same time. See, you adjust one area of the plate, and uh, it can ultimately affect other areas. So we'll keep an eye on this area, folks. Uh, you know, it's a lot going on out here. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Take care and stay safe out there.